Hello Floss Tube. this is Michelle at the Striped Rose and today is Monday, June 18th and this is my 11th um, Floss Tube video. Um, the last Floss Tube I did was March 10th and um, from the end of March, from Easter to May, is all, to Mother's Day, is always crazy around here. It's my birthday, Easter, my niece's birthday, my sister's birthday, um, my grandmother's birthday, then the ballet recital. Then this year we had Mary Margaret's graduation. Um, she graduated, so now I'm only homeschooling uh, one child. And then Mother's Day, and then my husband's birthday, and then Bella started a theater um, camp at a local community theater um, June 1st. And they go for two weeks, and then they have two weekends of performances. So this past weekend, she had her performances. Um, and then there's Bella's birthday and Father's Day, and um, <clears throat> the fun never ends around here. Um, I have been stitching. I did stitch Mania for the first time um, this year. Um, I've also been doing a lot of crocheting because I like to crochet just back and forth. Um, rows on blankets and my grandfather had a um, stroke on April 30th my grandmother's birthday was April 29th that was her 90th birthday um, I turned 45 at the end of March my grandmother turned 90 um, I'm crooked at the end of April so I realized that my grandmother was this age when she became a grandmother but Anyway, my grandfather had weed-eated all day um, before we got there for a birthday party on the 29th, and he's very active. He's 93, extremely active, still drives himself to his um, auto parts place that he's had for about 50, 50 or 60 years. Um, he weed-eated. He was constantly, we were all sitting outside, and he was constantly bringing chairs out of the house, you know, telling people to sit in this chair. Um, he doesn't sit still and so and then he had a stroke on April 30th so for the past six weeks <clears throat> he was in the hospital for three weeks and then he's been at the um, at a really nice rehab center that's about 10 minutes away from me so I've been going there a lot and so at first when I was there I've gotten so spoiled with cross stitch I like I like the light coming over my left shoulder I don't like the light coming over my right shoulder. Um, and I like my big, my big um, daylight lamp. And so I just don't travel with stitching anymore. I used to do it. I remember when Mary Margaret was in preschool, I started homeschooling her. Uh, she did three-year-old and four-year-old preschool, and then I started homeschooling. Uh, <clears throat> I would sit in the line and cross-stitch. I would sit at dance and cross-stitch. And now I've just, you know, I've got to have my daylight lamp over my left hand shoulder. So I travel with yarn. So I made <clears throat> tons and tons of washcloths. Um, I've been just buying every peaches and cream and lily sugar and cream. And what I've been doing, I just brought three to show you. Um, I've been doing the same pattern every time. And it's um, called the window pane pattern. The pattern is not on Ravelry, but it's linked on Ravelry. Um, my Ravelry name is Meg and Belle. It's all one word. It's, you know, I have Mary, Margaret, and Isabella. So Meg and Belle. Um, and I've linked them on my, uh, this is the back of it. And this is, it's a, there's a seed stitch at the top and the sides. Um, and then stockinette with a garter row. And then there's a pearl uh, or a garter uh, stripe going that way. So it's a window pane. And um, the first ones I made, these are the first ones I made. I got them out of the laundry basket. Um, they were kind of rectangular. And now I've been doing it so they're um, eight repeats, so they're more square. Um, so I've really, I really enjoyed knitting those. I could knit them. Um, at the rehab center, sometimes I'd knit outside. 
I could knit them. I can knit somewhat without looking down, um, which is good because I can sit there and talk to my grandfather. I can talk to the people that can come in and I can have my hands busy, which I need. Um, I think I got a little burned out on washcloths, so I've been crocheting. Um, I finished this crochet blanket. Um, this is, ooh, this is the hydrangea. I'm going to get to cross stitch. You can fast forward if you don't want to see crochet. I've got a couple of crochet blankets to show you. So fast forward if you don't want to see crochet. Um, I've got a lot of cross stitch to show you. Um, this is Attic 24. It's a blog. Attic 24 has a blog, and she comes up with um, her own take on common patterns, like a ripple or um, a wave stitch. This is just, this is a stacked shell stitch. Um, sometimes you see the shells are stacked so that it's a shell, a shell, and in the next row, the shells alternate. So you, but this one, they're just stacked. And she called it her hydrangea stripe. So she comes up with patterns and she comes up with color packs. She usually uses about 15 colors per blanket. Um, one of her color packs had 17 and it just amazes me that you can get that many colors um, to look good. And the stripe placement is random. It's not you do this sequence of 15 stripes and then you repeat that sequence over and over again. It's random all the time. I order my wool. Well, it's not wool. It's acrylic. It's DK weight acrylic. My grandmother calls it baby weight. It's what, you know, baby yarn is a lot of times. Um, DK weight, so it's smaller than worsted weight, number four. Um, I get it from Wool Warehouse in the UK. Um, I think it's slightly cheaper to order it from the UK and have it shipped from the UK. It doesn't make sense, but um, shipping's kind of crazy in America. Um, so anyways, so I did this, and then I, um, I didn't order the pack because I have so much. I didn't order the pack. So then I decided I wanted to do another one. So I did order the pack. But this one, it's the Hydrangea Colors. Um, Lucy, about once or twice a year, Lucy will do a, a cowl, a crochet along. And she'll give you um, like 15 stripes the first week. And then she'll give you the, the order. Um, my eye is bloody. Um, I don't know if you see that. Um, so I, that's why I had to make the video today because... Um, it happens when I get stressed out, and it happens when I have a lot of allergies. Um, and then after it breaks, you know, the blood clot moves up, and it looks really gross, and I wear sunglasses. So I had to do the video today because probably the rest of the week I'll have to wear sunglasses when I look at people because it's, it's, I'm getting grossed out looking at it. So she does a crochet along, and what, I think the last one she did was the woodland stripe, and I really liked this pattern because it looks like the crochet feather and fan pattern. No, it looks like the knit feather and fan pattern, but it's in crochet. So I'm using the hydrangea pack. I'm using the same color sequence, but I'm just doing it in the feather and fan. And I've got it. I like to make my blankets four feet wide. So that's my wingspan and then six feet tall, so I was six feet long, so I usually make my husband measure it out and I go up to about his nose. Um, and then I figure it's about four by six. So I'm still working on it, but I think they look nice together. I mean, I think they're really pretty. And it's funny, I bring this enormous bag of crochet and the nurses and um, the techs and everybody are like, aren't you finished with that yet? Or they say, wow, you've, you've, really, uh, you've really gotten a lot done on that, so. I've been a good crochet ambassador um, this week. Um, I started another crochet blanket. Lucy has another pack of colors called the Harmony Pack. And it's um, 
one of the ones where you crochet all the little bits together and then you join them up. And I haven't graduated to crocheting bits together because that's just too many ends for me to deal with and I'm not good at ends. So I decided I would make a V stitch. I'm not good at ends. Let me look at this side. I decided I wanted to do a V stitch. Um, and the information about this, uh, which V stitch I chose is also on my Ravelry page, possibly. So the thing about the Harmony blanket is all the little bits are joined together using this um, Parma Violet, this pale lavender. So um, it really changes the effect. This is a much brighter, vivid colored blanket than the other one because it has less of this color that joined in the other one. So I keep thinking, I don't know, maybe that's really ugly. Um, I can't decide. I was looking through this morning pictures from our um, trip to Harry Potter World in October, and I had completely forgotten there's a Mrs. Weasley's, it's not Mrs. Weasley's blanket. There was like a crochet shop, and it had a blanket with self-knitting needles, and it kind of looks like a V-stitch um, pattern, even though it's being knit, and I wanted to copy it, because it looks like a Mrs. Weasley blanket. I think maybe at the, I've seen, is there a place in England where you can go and visit the borough, and it has Mrs. Weasley's blanket? It seems like I've seen pictures of that. So, I don't know. Uh, it's slower going um, just because I'm changing colors after every row, but um, it entertains me. And then I started another one. I had seen a crochet blanket on black sheep, black sheep wools, and they were selling um, Stylecraft Special. That Lucy's packs are all Stylecraft Special DK. They did a pack, a chevron blanket, in Stylecraft Special, uh, Stylecraft Special Chunky. And um, I knew I wanted to buy the yarn from Wool Warehouse. And the only way that you could get the pattern from Black Sheep Wools was to buy the yarn pack. So I looked all over the internet and I found a really sharp chevron at All About Amy, A-M-I. Um, this is on my Ravelry page too. And I think on my Instagram, I put links to these three blankets because I, um, these last three blankets because I put a picture on of them. So I was gonna try to match the colors that were in the blanket um, on black sheep wools, and then I just decided to do what I wanted to do. Um, there's not a style crafts chunky in this egg, duck egg, so I held it double, and I think that it, um, I did some math, I don't know if I did the right math, to see if I could double the DK and get the chunky um, thickness, and I think I kind of did, so, but I'm not happy about these two colors together, so, I don't know. We'll see. Then, I just ordered some more because I've been looking at Patchwork Heart. And she has crochet blankets that you can order a color packs for. Is it Dara Moore's? Um, and she has a Granny Square um, blanket. And I think I want to try it, even though that would be fiddly bits to join together. I think I want to try it. Um, usually for Stylecraft Special DK, I use these Clover Armor Crochet Hooks. This is a G. The purple one's a G. I really like the way it feels. And I just ordered, I just got some more in the mail right before I, um, A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, because I'd like to try a Victorian lattice blanket, and I think you need a tighter tension. So those are the crochet hooks I really, really like. All right. Oh, I have one more thing to show you. 
if we're still doing favorite things or what I'm all into, a la Kitten Stitcher. I just got these in the mail, too. Um, I had gotten a hand cream sample that was sweet mint in my Ipsy or my Birch Box. And then I went on Amazon and I bought this pack. And it has strawberry and cream, lemon cream, vanilla cream. I thought that was going to be peach. And coconut. And they all smell a little bit like coconut, which is fine because I like the way coconut smells. Um, they're vegan, vegan, no, um, no parabens, phthalates, mineral oil, GMOs, petroleum, or triclosan. I guess that's that um, antibacterial. Um, cruelty free and vegan. Made in, uh, created in Canada. I wonder if created and made are the same thing. Anyways, I got that pack of four on Amazon, and I don't think they're really overpowering. And the reason that I ordered this pack was because Saturday when we visited my grandfather for Father's Day, my nieces talked me out of all my other ones. So, <laughs> so I had to order some. Okay, so cross-stitch. It's time for cross-stitch. It's been a really long time. Um, so I have a lot, I think. Um, I'm not going to show you the things that I've been working on for a long time, the things that I usually rotate, because I've got to show you all my mania starts. So um, I looked back in my cross-stitch planner to see um, what I have been doing since March 10th when I made my last podcast. So if you follow me on Instagram, um, you're not going to see anything new. I'm sorry. Um, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's the Striped Rose, and it's private. And if I can just see that you cross-stitch, um, I'll accept your request. If it looks like you're um, selling bodybuilding shakes or you're a young man who takes lots of pictures of himself in a swimsuit um, I don't really see why you want to follow me I mean here Bella you can have the lemon one now you can have the lemon one um, I just I, I don't know I mean I don't know why if you so the first thing I finished was the Marianne Selena Mott, the one that I whined and whined and whined about because of all those queen stitches. Um, I got them all done. So I don't have written down which sampler and antique needlework quarterly this came out of. It will be somewhere on Instagram, and it's probably in my last two podcasts, or at least my March podcast all the information about that that's all DMC except I used a Gloriana thread for one of the paler blues um, and I really just substitute used that one just because just because it was Gloriana thread I okay I finished Plum Street samplers earthly treasures I think um, I substituted a Valdani brick, I think, to make my berries a little more red. Um, I think it had called for terracotta, and they were kind of orange. And um, it made it look too Halloween-y for me, and this is something that I want on my red sampler wall. And I'm sorry, the, um, the clouds and the trees, um, this window has two walls. This room has two walls of windows, and um, the lights just sort of coming and going. I didn't jump, I got into the Sarah Spencer right before, there was like a, there were two waves of Sarah, Sally Spencer stitch-alongs, um, and I was in one of the waves. Um, I think I was in the wave with, I can't remember which wave I was in, which class I was in, I can't remember. 
Um, I decided to do it on the country. Um, this Vigart fabric, the country mocha, maybe the one that has the printed um, modeling on it. And I went ahead and just kept Sally Spencer because it was just really, really cute and I didn't really want to rechart it. I didn't put in all the black initials. Um, I do like the way that a lot of the second wave of Sally Spencer stitchers, I think Michelle Bendy um, might have been the one that started putting different initials representing different people in the stitching community. Um, and I really, really liked that. Um, I used the called for colors. I think that was buttermilk and you can see it. Um, you can see it better um, in person. So um, I've got the rest of that fabric to do. Baby, it's cold outside. Mm -hmm. All right. Then I finished Bless Our Home. No, 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 no. Then I finished Heaven and Nature Sing, but I didn't bring it down here. Um, then I finished Bless Our Home by Little House Needleworks, and that was the um, Priscilla and Chelsea stitch along. And I gave it to my mom for Mother's Day. Um, and she was really excited because it was actually her chart that I had acquired. And she said that she thinks that she started it long, long ago, probably when it first came out. And so she's really happy now to have it done. Um, and I just pulled colors, probably some of the ones that Priscilla and Chelsea used. Um, I actually put, I, pull, I went into my, in preparation for Stitch Mania and in preparation for summer stitching in general, I, I put all my red and blue variegated flosses, variegated cotton flosses on a ring. And I just kept it in my stitching basket. And so I just, so that I could, you know, really choose my blues and reds for each each thing. So my next finish, my last finish, um, was a Stitch Mania piece. And this is called Summer Song by Blackbird Designs. And again, I just pulled um, a yellow, a black, a gray, um, red and blue. On my red and blue ring of floss, I also put the Dinky Dyes Black Coral, which is what I used for him. It's not heavily variegated, um, but I really like it. It's my favorite black to stitch with. And um, I think since, uh, since Christmas, anything that has black that I've stitched, um, Sally Spencer. Um, I used all cotton threads except I used black coral. And you can't see why I like it so much. Um, but I can see some variegation in it and I just I just enjoy stitching with it. I wanted to show you the book that's, um, that Summer Song came out of. This is an older Blackbird Designs from 2004 which doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but Bella was born in 2004 and she turned 14 on Friday. So um, I guess it was a while ago. Um, they stitched theirs one over one. Um, I will do just about anything to avoid one over one stitching. Um, I understand in designs that words, you know, are gonna have to be stitched one over one. The occasional little bird or bug or something or is going to have to be stitched one over one but i'm not going to stitch a whole design one over one um, i really want to get a hold of the summer schoolhouse by brenda gervais and stitch it um, on 40 count one over two um, i just don't i'm not going to stitch anything one over one that i don't have to so i wanted to show you this book and I wanted to show, it's obviously out of print, but I wanted to show you what is in it in case you um, found it in the wild somewhere or in case you wanted to look for it. Um, there's that one. I'd like to do that one. I like that one. I don't know what that one's called, but the oak leaves 
and the American flags and the alphabet. I think that's really pretty. Um, again, fast forward if you don't want to flip through this book. That's fine. This is the only one I'm not, I'm not real crazy about that one. I don't know. Maybe I would like it better if it were all in blue. Maybe it would just, I just, I go back and forth on whether I would stitch that one or not. But, you know, I love to stitch with red, but I don't know. That one might have to be blue for me. Um, this one, I don't really get that. I, I like American designs that have a whale. Um, even though whaling sounds like it was pretty horrible. <laughs> um, it makes sense to me to have Americana things with a whale because Nantucket and the whaling industry was iconic. But the fish, I, I don't know. This I would like to do, but change those flowers somehow. I don't know. That one's kind of kind of weird. Um, this is the one that I did. This is he's done a one over one here. I think he looks kind of cramped. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm claustrophobic. Maybe I think that he could breathe more, get more air into his lungs if he were over two. I don't know. I don't know. Um. Though, and this one I would really like to do this one. That's probably my favorite one out of the book, besides the crow. I do love the crow. This is done on, um, oh, it's kind of a gray fabric. I'm not going to spend too much time hunting through the book to find it, but that just looks like it would, I just, lo I love the fabric it's on. I really like that. So, just in case you ever encounter this book in the wild, or you want to set a search for it, um, Souvenirs of Summer is a good one. And I wanted to show you another Blackbird Designs book. Um, everybody is stitching, everybody, everybody, is stitching this bird here. Um, I think Priscilla started it for Mania. I think Lynette from Homesteading on the Home Front has a group of people that are going to start it on September 1st. And I'm thinking about starting it, I think it's September 1st. I'm thinking about starting it on September 1st as well with them. But I just wanted to show you that mine is in this book. I'm not going to say that in French because my children are both home and they'll tell me I'm doing it wrong. Um, this one, it's in here. I think it was published in here first. This one is from 2009. It's really nice that while I was birthing babies and raising little babies that my mother was buying all these Blackbird design booklets. That's, that's really nice. I'm glad about that. Um, so it's got the cover design on it, which is based on an antique sampler. The antique sampler had the girl's name written across here, um, but Barb and Alma, uh, you know, they saw these holly berries, and that said Christmas to them. Um, here's the original sampler. Isn't that pretty? I, I would, I would want to leave that up all year round, even if it said Joie Noel or whatever it is. I'd probably just leave it up all year round. I took my, uh, Jerry made me take my uh, Christmas cards. You know, I tape the Christmas cards um, to a doorway so you can see them when you're coming in the house. And I had taken most of the Christmas cards down, but the, the pictures that have my friends and their children on them, I, I think I took those down around Easter because he said, they got to come down. And I was like, why? I mean, these are our friends, and why, why do our friends have to come down? Because it says Merry Christmas. I didn't really see that. But anyways, um, so tis the season. The bird is in there, and it's got, um, it's charted for French or English. And since my daughters um, chose to study French, you know why they chose to study French? Because... I went to graduate school for German, and I studied Gothic, 
and my husband has a master's degree in Anglo-Saxon literature. He likes Anglo-Saxon. So we we're just like, oh, well, we're going to teach you German, you know, and we're going to teach you about the, we're going to teach you Anglo-Saxon. I'll teach you Gothic. You know, we started them with Mutzi when, uh, when they were really little and they're just like, no, no, we want a romance language. We want French. Since mommy and daddy can't help them much in French. Um, but it's also charted for English, but because of my girls, I'd probably do it in, um, in French. Um, the other thing that this book has that were in my mania, they have some strawberries. If you get this book, one of the charts, it's got th the three charts for the three berries, but one of the charts is printed twice. So I, if you email Bar Barb and Alma, I think I did it like last year, they'll send you the new chart and you can um, rubber cement it over the incorrect one. Um... This one, which I think is really pretty. Uh, and then this one, which is a better picture. It's kind of these vintage, vintage-y Christmas colors. I just love a black bird. Um, a stocking, Linda Joe, And I don't know, some of these may be printed in other books. This may be printed, I know there's a set of Christmas stockings. I don't know if that, this is in the Christmas stockings or if you could buy this separately at one time. Um, and then this, somebody showed, this recently was, somebody showed this really, was it salt, salt, bo salt box stitcher? in her first um, podcast, which I enjoyed immensely, and I'm looking forward to seeing everything on your walls. I thought about doing this and putting my wedding, the year of our wedding, in there. I think about doing so many things. Um, and then, you know, just the usual Blackbird design showing how you can make photocopy of your work and and use it in different ways. So that is another book by Blackbird Designs that contains this, just in case you run across it in the wild. Um, it would be wonderful if they would reprint all these. All right. So I started two new things before Mania. No, no, no. I don't know. I've got one here, uh, and this is a project bag I made, and I think I got this at Joann's with that inside, and it's not straight, so don't, don't get excited. It's a Vana bag. It's upside down on the back. That's how these work. Um, I started a long-awaited a thousand hills. I love the verse. I love the psalm that the verse comes from. I love the fact that you've got all these animals grazing and then you've got like a leopard up here. <laughs> I like that. Um, the colors, there's hickory sticks for the tree trunk. Priscilla, oh, I think Chelsea has this. Does Chelsea have this? And some of the animals are hickory sticks. Hashtag hick stick. Um, I need to do more on it. I need, I just need to get this one done because I love it. The colors, the Tennessee clay and what's the other red that I'm using? Tennessee red clay by Crescent Colors, Classic Color Works and Classic Color Works red current together. Um, they just, those colors just glow together and the bird, and it's, um, what are the two greens? Pea pod and avocado are the two greens in the tree and that, that will be down here. And <sighs> I really enjoyed working on that, but um, I didn't do my rotation at all in May um, because I was doing mania 
and so I just didn't do any of my rotation. Um, the first, I decided that I was going to do 18 days, and then I picked out, um, I picked out enough to do the whole month, and I kitted them up enough to do the whole month, because I wanted to see what would happen. May was um, the dance recital. I have two girls dancing in the dance recital, and it was Mary Margaret's last dance recital, so there was boohooing. She did a senior, well, um, the girls can do senior solos if they choreograph them themselves. And this year they had a lot of girls, so they did them in two groups. They had a group of five, and then Mary Margaret and another girl um, choreographed a duet. And it's it was the owner, the dance studio owner's daughter. And um, they had a little rivalry um, when they were three and four. And then again, when they were like seven and eight and nine, and then, and then they've really gotten close in high school. Um, and it's just, you know, it's wonderful to see how their relationship evolved. And, you know, I, I joke, I would tell um, the owner's mom all the time, I was like, they're not still slapping at each other, are they? You know, they're not, um, but they put that into their duet. You know, they had a moment where if you were their mom, you knew that they were, going back and laughing about how they used to scrap at each other. Um, all the tears, all the hard eyes. The point of that was that May was hard. Um, we were, you know, we had the last recital, we had the dance graduation, senior graduation party, and then we had a homeschool graduation party with one of Mary Margaret's very good friends. Um, they met through music lessons when they were about six or seven. And um, Mary Margaret actually teaches, goes once a week to um, Mary's house. That's why it was Mary and Mary Margaret graduate. Um, and teaches Mary's youngest sister and her oldest niece ballet. So we had a joint graduation party with diplomas that Lori and I got off of Amazon.com because you can get your graduation diplomas there. I don't know how, if that will mean anything to anyone else, but um, so it was just a lot of, a lot of things going on. And my grandfather had already had a stroke. So I thought, I need mania. I need to start each day with 15 minutes or 45 minutes of stitch stitching something new to sort of just look forward to each day and to just, just slow down and focus on something that wasn't a to-do list because mania is not really a to-do list. It's new starts, new starts. It was just, I needed it. Um, so, but I only made it 18 days because after 18 days, I, um, I thought I needed to stop. So I'm going to show you my, um, uh, and then I'll show you my, my, my stash haul and, um, most of it's from my birthday. Um, I got lots of birthday, uh charts all right so the first thing that i started on day one of mania um was brenda gervais wordplay for may and i bought um may and june and i thought i was just gonna whip them out but i started 18 starts i didn't even get to the june so what i'm gonna do i think is i'm gonna order um August, I'm going to skip July for this year and order August, September, and October or skip July and August and order September, October, and November and try to get ahead of the game that way and then come back and get June. But I am going to finish May um, because if I don't finish it, I might not ever finish it. So I'm using some of the called for colors and some um, Victoria... Victorian motto sampler threads. Um, I keep them all on rings by color family, loose color family, um, next to me so that I can just pull them as I want them and put them in everything. 
Um, so I'm at the edge. Um, I have a lot of white to do. Somehow I left the white till last. But I'm enjoying that. You know, I did not like these a couple of years ago. Um, I saw some people stitching them on Instagram, and I just thought, eh. And then, you know, Priscilla and Chelsea waved their magic stitchy wand and made me have to have them. I don't know how that happened. I really don't know why I didn't like them when they first came out. But um, So I got them from Brenda Gervais. Um, because I'm uh, not sure else who has them. Priscilla and Chelsea talk about um, who has them, but Country Stitches, Brenda Gervais online shop does have them. Um, so that was day one. So I'm trying to figure out, I didn't come up with, I guess, mm, I guess they're going in the floor. This day two, oops, I have my handy dandy, uh, oh, here it is. Um, day two is Down in the Valley by um, Blackbird Designs. I, I was looking on eBay for it, and on eBay, it's listed as Brenda Gervais. But it's not. It's, um, and so I, then I was thinking, well, maybe she designed it. Maybe she designed it for them, but I don't think so. So um, they give you all the finishing instructions. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I bought, this is a silver candlestick holder, and I need to go and buy the spray paint. You spray paint it with cream. And then I couldn't find the exact um, trim. My daughter uses my phone, and so there's like Pokemon Go notifications. Um, I mean, I played Pokemon Go when it first came out. I, I thought it was fun. <laughs> um, so I found a ribbon, um, a ribbon that I'm going to Starbucks balance. Somebody in my family just went to Starbucks. I'm almost done with it, and I'm pulling a lot of just colors that look right and Victorian Motto sampler thread colors. And I'm hoping that I can finish this today. Um, I've just got to finish these little flowers, I think, and put two birds over here. And then um, I really, really want to finish it like that and keep it next to my sewing table. I'm feeling really motivated to finish this. It's just, I'm doing it on 32 count because I wanted it to be the right size and I'm not enjoying stitching with two threads. Um, I changed the house color some. I think this side of the house, I did it in toasted barley. I think it's supposed to be in the sun-kissed color. Yeah, it's a lot lighter. Toasted barley was sitting next to me. Um, I have one ring that also sits next to me all the time, and it has all my colors that I'm using for the Blackbird Designs Garden Club, and I, I love all those colors, and so I find myself pulling from it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I'm also using Primitive Cocoa from Victoria Mata Sampler Threads. I go ahead and hole punch an extra hole in here to put them on a ring. And I've been thinking about going ahead and separating them all in half and having one that stays on a master ring and then putting another one from each color, you know, in a project that I'm using it for. But that seems like a lot of busy work for me. I don't know that I would see that one through. All right, the next one I thought I was going to finish before Father's Day. And then I decided I wasn't in the mood. So it's going to be a Christmas present. This is one, a cross-eyed Cricut, and I bought this, remember, oh, I keep knocking things, see my junky china cabinet over there, remember back in the day when you could go into Hobby Lobby and buy cross-eyed Cricut and Lottie da and um, Birds of a Feather, yeah, you could buy those at Hobby Lobby, and this one I got on clearance for 60 cents. Um, it's Thoughts of Father. It says Prophet and Fan Club, Counselor on Call, Childhood Foundation, Guardian of Truth, Character Model, Champion of Dreams. 
And so I wanted to do this for my father for Father's Day. I did the Bless Our Home for my mom for Mother's Day. I cross-stitched, my dad was in the Army, um, and I cross-stitched him one. Uh, I'll have to show you a picture of it. It's pretty funny. It's just this, like, you know, what was that thing where you would just see, like, the nose and the forehead of some character? I don't know. It's like that, except he's wearing a camouflage helmet with, like, tree branches sticking out of it. It says, this office is not occupied. The occupants... This office is not empty. The occupants are camouflaged. <laughs> That's the last thing I cross-stitched for my dad probably 30 years ago. So, um, I didn't really like the colors. They're, it's a, it's more of a pastel variegated. Um, and I chose to use Acorn Woods Silken Colors. And it's, um, it looks like acorn woods with some teal. And so I've made a star. It's not huge, and it's just words, but I decided that it can be a Christmas present. It can be a Christmas present. So that was um, day three, Thoughts of Father by the Cricut Collection. The next one I fell in love with on Nicole's Needlework, and it's from this book, In Friendship's Way. All right, I had Stitch Mania, Blackbird Design Stitch Mania. The sun is being really, really weird right now. Um, Blackbird Design Stitch Mania. That's pretty much what I had. Um, I want to do everything in this book. This little basket that this pin cushion is in, I can't find that at Hobby Lobby anymore. I can't find it online and I can't find it in the stores um, it must not have lasted long because this book is only from it's not that old you can still get it um, 2015 I guess that's old in the blackbird design world but I'll flip through this one this can be the blackbird designs episode there's that adorable little pincushion I just think that's the cutest thing ever um, and also I wanted to flip through these because they don't show all the designs, um, on, on the front of the book. That one's on the front of the book. I like that a lot. Um, and it shows how to put it on a box. Um, this one, that little design. Now that box is still at Hobby Lobby. A bunch of people have bought that box. Um, some strawberries. They look really big. And more strawberries. More strawberries. More strawberries. That's a ton of strawberries. All right. And then this one um, that's not on the cover of the book. And I saw it when Nicole's Needleworks did that. And that just... Um, I guess that's the original. Um, but something about those pops of orange. Um, I mean, I really like orange. But um, it's just kind of unexpected here. So I got the colors that were called for. And they, the marigold or whatever was just a really crazy orange. And so I think I'm going to use autumn gourd. Autumn gourds by Victoria, Victoria Motto. Now, a lot of her colors are limited edition um, because she does the Prim Thread Club and then the other limited edition. But this one I bought on eBay. Um, and I think she still has this one on eBay. And um, it's just a really nice, soft, rusty orange. I really like that. Um, so here was my start. I've only worked on it one day. I was just trying to slap a bunch of the colors in to see if I liked them. I was kind of disappointed in old money because it's not dark enough. You know, I want it to look like the picture. So I'm going to have to, I like the color. I just need it to be darker. So I'm going to look around for that. Um, what I decided to do for my mania, I started 18 starts and I want to finish nine of them this year. 
because a lot of them are smaller. Um, I want to finish nine this year. If I don't finish nine this year, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing's going to happen. But um, so what I did is I remembered a couple of days ago, like a week ago, that I had a regular rotation and that I was going to start it back in June. I didn't, it took me a while to remember that. So I started back my regular rotation, and then I decided to add in, um, let me show you, I did it for June, July, and then I started for August. Um, I decided to, um, two days, uh, work on different mania starts. So, um and have a two week block and then repeat it and then repeat it repeat that two week block of switching two days on a mania piece until something gets finished and then adding it in um i don't know if that made a lot of sense but like um let's see yesterday was no so today is monday and tomorrow's tuesday and i'm working on the down in the valley pin cushion and then um, Wednesday and Thursday, I'll work on peace. Friday and Saturday, I'm going to work on that one I just showed you, the 1861 Antique Sampler. And then the next week, I'll work on the May wordplay two days, peace again for two days, because I really want to finish that one, and I'll show you that one in a minute. And then my rose garden for two days. And then I'll just repeat those two weeks until something gets finished and then add something in its slot in addition to my regular three-day rotation. I'm so good at making plans, and I'm so bad at sticking with them. Okay, I started Rose Garden by, I thought that was so pretty, and it uses one color, Jakey Brown, kind of a nipple pink color. I don't know what Jakey Brown means. And I've only worked on it one day. Just enough to make me feel like I'd started it. Just enough to have 15 or 20 minutes of just, um, like, free time. Not free time, because everything I did, you know, in May, I chose to do. You know, visiting with my grandparents and doing the graduation. I chose to do those things, but... You know how you feel when you do a new cross stitch start? That was just really important to me to start my day like that every day. Um, it was just, it was just like a fun little, I don't know, like playing hooky or something. I don't know. Which I never did when I worked outside the home or in school because very highly developed guilt conscience. But anyway, um, after that, I started a new. Sunday, Santa Sunday start because I had finished my Heaven and Nature Sing by Blackbird Designs, which I didn't bring down here for some reason. And I started um, Little House Needleworks Town Church. Um, I love this series. I'd really like to do a bunch of them. I don't know if I'd like to finish them as flat folds or cubes. I'm not good at finishing things either, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, I kind of like the cubes. I'd kind of like to be able to set them on the mantle, um, or maybe even on that ledge up there. That might be a good place for them. I didn't get far. Just some juniper for the tree and a little red bird. There's a needle in there. I don't usually leave my needles in my projects. Um, peace on Earth. Okay. I had seen this one somewhere, probably on Pinterest. And I don't have a picture of it because I just printed it out from the internet. But if you search Blackbird Designs, Peace on Earth. I obviously didn't put my phone on airplane mode. If you search on the internet, Blackbird Designs, Peace on Earth, your images, you're going to come up with a couple of things. Um, one of them is going to be like that wreath. The real blocky style red and green wreath. It's, I think it says Peace on Earth. And then there's going to be another one, um, which is this. 
this border goes all the way around. There's a bird, and then there's a vase of flowers, and then it says Noel in one corner. Um, I think I explained how to get it on my Instagram. There's a Dutch, I think it's Dutch, handwork boutique company, cross-stitch company, and they have a beautiful newsletter, and you can sign up um, to get the newsletter emailed to you, and it's, it's just beautiful. You know, sometimes you see designs, and you like the design, it's pretty, but when you see it in a different setting, it jumps out at you. Um, this is a beautiful newsletter, and the way that it's formatted, and the way that it's um, not blocked, the way that it, the way that it's typeset, I don't know. Everything just jumps out at you, um, and looks really nice. And she has a lot of free designs that designers have given her to include in her newsletter. Um, and I know I put the link on. Instagram and I'll try to put the link down below but Blackbird Designs did a design this design called Peace on Earth and if you type in if you Google Peace on Earth um, it'll come up you'll see you'll recognize it um, so that's one that I'm gonna be do I'm gonna be working a lot on it I don't want it as a Christmas piece I'm gonna put my initials at the bottom where it said Noel um, but this you can't it just you can't see red pear is that a week's color i absolutely love red pear and then baked apple i can't remember oh it says right here yeah they're all week's colors baked apple and red pear oh my goodness i just love those two together it's subtle it's subtle uh, um the greens there's actually a light green and a dark green there's the dark green um, I'm just using two, um, two uh, Victoria Motto threads that I actually lost the, um, that's the lighter one. It's, there's not a huge difference, but it's fine. Um, this is the darker one. I think one might be butterfly bush and one might be iris leaves. And I think I did just order them on her um, eBay site. So they're still available um, but those are the two greens that I'm using I don't know why I put these two on here I don't think I'm using them in here but look that was a primitive carnation and prim aqua I really like those um, did you have lunch oh. so that is one that I'm really excited about and one that you may have to hunt for but I'll try to um, put the name down below. All right, after that I did Summer Song, which I finished, and then I did, a lot of these are freebies from the internet, so I don't have a picture that I can show you. Um, this one would be easy for you to, to find. The Work Basket on their website, um, they have freebies, and they have one that's called the Pink Flower, or just called Pink Flower, and one that's called Blue Flower. And I had kitted both of them up, plan on doing both of them, um, but I only got to pink flower. <sighs> I know, my threads are a mess. And I'm using pressed rose petals and uh, green moss. I mean, eventually I'll have to use some other colors too, but I think that's the top. Um, if you, you've probably seen it a million times, it's easy to find the work basket pink flower. It, um, their heads are kind of nodding and curved around. And then the blue flower is a companion piece to it. But I didn't stitch that. I didn't start that one yet. Um, so that was a mania start. Um, then I wanted to do Not Forgotten Farms freebie grand old flag. I don't know what day that was, but it was a pretty busy day. I got the top of the, and back of the G done. Grand Old Flag by Not Forgotten Farms. Um, Priscilla has done it. It's on her blog. Um, she's probably showed it recently on her Instagram in her patriotic. The words aren't coming to me today. It's allergy medication, I guess. Um, so Grand Old Flag by Not Forgotten Farm. 
What are you microwaving? Oh, nothing? Okay, that's that's good. Use the microwave for nothing. The next one is La Di Da. And this is called Alone in the Garden. I had never seen this one. I think I got this on Stash Unload. Um, Alone in the Garden by La Di Da. And it's kind of weird colors. It looks red and green, and it's not. The tree trunk is gray. And the outline of the diamonds and the out, outer border is gray. Um, so I decided to go with it. 535 DMC. I'm doing this in DMC. That's what I got my first, first time I, and only time I worked on that. Alone in the garden. So when I bought it, I thought, oh, you know, red and green, because that's what I like to stitch. But it's not. It's a, um, those diamonds, I think, are four, 435. And then the tree trunk and um, all the outlines are 535, which is gray. It's okay to stitch out of your comfort zone sometimes. Stitch kind of weird colors. Um, the next thing is from another Blackbird Designs book, because I'm all about Blackbird Designs books that my mother bought years ago. This is the same book. I think I flipped through it before. Um, it has the Heaven and Nature Sing that I finished. Um, this one is called Simple Harvest. It's one shade of, um, I think it's kelp, water lilies. Um, and I, I really like what she says. Um, she says, I know you probably have stitched so many alphabets that you could almost scream. People may come into your home and wonder if you have a slight memory problem and need remedial alphabet reminders in every room. But nevertheless, here is one more for you to stitch. And she goes on to say that um, she was, you know, working on something and it wasn't working out right and she just needed something to just stitch. Just sit down and stitch and blow all the cobwebs away. And of course... She came up with an alphabet. So this is, okay, it's not Dinky Dyes. It's on a Dinky Dyes thing, but I don't know why it's on a Dinky Dyes thing. I know it's not, because I bought the called for color, which is, I don't know. It's kelp, I think. Um, it's blues and greens and yellowy golds not dinky dies um, and that's all I got it's a really small sampler or I really miscalculated the fabric it's kind of weird they're kind of weird colors but I'm gonna go with it and I think I did a flip through maybe of that book in a previous video when I was talking about um, all right, the next one is another free one that I can't show you the picture of, but you can Google um, the Little Stitcher Miss Mushroom, and it's a Christmas ornament. Wow. It's a Christmas ornament, and um, basically there are some snowflakes, and they're hanging, so they'll have a little string that the snowflakes are hanging from. She has kind of a mushroom dress, some big elf shoes, and there are two mushrooms on either side of her, and then a snowy border. And I just thought she was cute. I thought she'd be a cute Christmas ornament. And I think every single thing I'm stitching for Stitch Mania is on 40 count, um, Zweigart. I don't know if it's latte or mocha, light mocha maybe, maybe that's what, they're all on the same thing. I ordered a big piece, calculated everything, cut it all up. All right, the next thing, my mother has lots and lots of cross stitch patterns and a lot of them are kitted up with 
variegated floss. And I'm always like, oh, I need that color. She's like, no, 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 no. You can't break up the kitted project. So I really wanted, you know, Weeping Willow. We always use that. And Blue Moon. And I really wanted another Old Blue Jeans. And Bramble Bush. I thought these were great colors. Black Coffee. I wanted them. And she says, no, no, no. You can't break up something that I've kitted. So I said, fine. I'll stitch it. Okay. Little House Needleworks. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Proverbs 3, 3. Um, it's nice. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't mind stitching it. It's I don't have a burning desire to stitch it. But it's the only way that I could get these five flosses from my mom. So I'll stitch it and give it to her. And boy, have I got a lot done. That was just my one day start. Because remember, I was starting these things and then rushing off to a family um, something or other. But get five, five flosses that I'll use a lot. Those are neutrals, browns and greens and blues. Those are ones that I'll use a lot. And the only way I could get them was to stitch it. All right. Um, the next one is a free design from Sub Rosa. And it is in the file section of the Prim Stitcher Society on Facebook. And it's called Liberty. And I'm going to try to stitch. My mother's birthday is at the end of July. And I'm going to try to finish it um, for her. It's small. So it has bunting across the top. It has a little tiny house and a large girl holding a flag. It says 17, a large 1776. And then at the bottom, it says Liberty. And there's a little, this crooked border, zigzag border goes all around the other three sides. Um, it's just blue, white, brown, two browns maybe, and red. Um, and I'm just pulling from my blue and red um, floss ring. So if you want to find that, it's called Liberty. It's by Sub Rosa 2014, and it's a free pattern on the Prim Stitchers Society. Um, so I'm looking forward to stitching that one. The next one is one that I've had for a really long time. Um, it's called The Crooked Way. And it's by Chart Makers. And Chart Makers, if I understand this correctly, yes. Hmm. Chart Makers is, or was, Kathy, D Kathy Barrick, she was Kathy Barrick Dieter, I guess, at one time. So Kathy Barrick and the lady from Good Housewife working together under the label Chart Makers. And I didn't know that. I was looking, I guess I was looking up either Good Housewife or Kathy Barrick Designs on eBay quite a few years ago. And I was able to get a lot of chart maker samplers um, that I hoard and cherish and call my precious. Um, and this one says, Oh, may my feet never run astray, nor rove nor seek the crooked way. And I think I'm using all the DMC conversion on this one. And it's not very big. Of course, I'm doing it on 40 count. Um, but that was my start on that one. So a lot of times if you, I, I still, I don't know if I have everything that they put out chart as under the chart maker's label. Somehow or the other, I got my hands on a freebie um, that they, <coughs> I don't know if somebody sent it to me on eBay or if I got it at a needle workshop. But I'll search chart makers a lot, and I'll come up with all these um, record or musician hits on eBay. But um, look up chart makers on eBay and see what you can come up with. Because, I mean, Kathy Barrick and 
good housewife working together. I mean, that's like the dream team, right? All right, so there's that one. The next one is um, gonna be harder to find. This was a free design that was originally on the Needleprint blog. Um, in my, I have a board on Pinterest. It's Michelle at the Striped Rose. Michelle has one L. And it's, excuse me, it's at, the little at sign, which I always thought that should be around. Right. Okay, I had to free up some memory. Um, this next one, um, I know I have two Pinterest boards. One is Cross Stitch Freebies, and one is Stitch Mania. It may be Stitch Mania 2018. And I know I've pinned this on both of those, and the links may be dead, or you may be able to get the chart from them. Um, I don't know if Stitchy Box, it seems like Stitchy Box, did they buy up a lot of needle print charts? I don't know if they got this freebie. This says red and white, and the and is an ampersand, red and white, sweetie. I didn't know you were gonna boil water. That's okay, it's almost over. There's a lot of noise but I need to just go ahead and get this done. The kettle is very loud. Um, S apostrophe Gravenhaga 1892. And it's just a red um, marking sampler. So it says red and white sweetie, S-W-E-E-T-I-E. -E -E, um, S apostrophe Gravenhaga 1892. And I've just made a start on it with um, DMC 498. So um, it's a nice one. It's just like a a, a red French schoolgirls marking sampler um, with a couple of crown motifs and bird and a tree motifs, um, and then red alphabets. And that was originally a freebie reproduction from needle print. All right, so there's one more that I started on the 18th, and that, um, the chart was loaned to me by Lori at Mischievous Stitches. Um, I made a working copy for me because I'm trying to keep her copy pristine so that I can give it back to her, um, and she can send it out to somebody else or she can keep it. It's Pink Sparrow Sampler, and this is by, um, I don't know if there are two different lines, Brenda Gervais and With Thy Needle. I don't really know what the difference is when you say something is by Brenda Gervais or <clears throat> With Thy Needle. Um, this one just says an antique reproduction And I just don't see, uh, with thy needle in through. Um, I think a couple, uh, Lori's already finished stitching this one. Lori at Mischievous Stitches. And it seems like there's some other people on Instagram um, doing this one. I'll keep that one pristine. And I just worked on it one day, um, the last day of Stitch Mania. Um, just started in the top left hand corner and it's going to go into my two week um, rotation of the mania pieces and so I'm looking forward to that one I loved watching her stitch it um, I liked watching the colors because um, they weren't you know what she thought they were going to be looking at the chart um, so I, I'm really looking forward to finishing that one and then getting that one back to her um the only other thing that I have to show you, because I've already done the crochet and knitting, is I was going to show you some new charts that I have gotten in the past three months. Um, March was my birthday. Excuse me. Um, so I got a lot of charts then. Um, so if you don't like to look at um, haul or stash videos, then um, I think this is going to be the last thing I do. Um, excuse me. So you can say goodbye now. Um, 
but if you want to stick around, I have a stack of things to show you. Um, the first thing, and I can't remember, I may have showed these to you last time. Lori Pot, the pot calling the kettle black because she enables me and she enables everybody and then she accuses other people of enabling her and that's the pot calling the kettle black. Um, had reintroduced us all to the City Stitcher. Um, and these are designs that have been around and a lot of us thought they were out of print, but they're not. You can go to the City Stitcher's website, oh, which is, it's, it's kind of like a quilt, quilt online shop. But I got this Adam and Eve, and it's a really unusual Adam and Eve because Adam and Eve look slightly realistic. Um, but I like that, and they're like five and six dollars. Um, is Ki Diana at Is Kismet Stitches bought quite a bit of them, and you've probably seen Emily C. Um, I think she bought this one and some other ones. Um, so I just ordered two. I also got this one to stitch for my mom. Liberty Sampler. This one, and these are in no particular order. They, when I thought that I was going to make an April, when I thought I was going to make an April video, they were in order, but now they're in no particular order. This one, I think I got on Stash Unload. I saw Stephanie at um, Just Keep Stitching. It seems like she had this one, um, and I loved it. I was really surprised. It's all in DMC like a lot of the earlier Little House Needleworks are. Here is the June wordplay. I told you I'd bought June and May together. Um, I'll probably start that one next year. This one I think might have been an eBay purchase. I have a lot of Carriage House samplings pieces, but I think, um, but I had missed this one. And you know I love hills, little hills in, um, so I went ahead and got it. And I don't know what the colors really look like, but I don't think I'm going to use a fluorescent looking yellow there. This I think had been, was a birthday purchase um, from 123 Stitch. I loved this when it came out. I think it came out last year at market. Um, and I just love it. Um, I like her designs that have the big word, like Boo and Noel. Um, I got this one and Nest this year. Um, but I just, it's just so simple. I just love it. I jumped, I was going to jump on this uh, stitch along. I think Emily C. may have already finished it. Um, Lori at Mischievous Stitches finished this. Um, my husband really likes Bob Dylan. Bella, do you and Mary Margaret like Bob Dylan? Not really. Not really. But when I saw Emily stitching it, I thought, wouldn't that make a great graduation sampler? For a kid that doesn't like Bob Dylan or samplers or cross stitch. But, um, but her mother does. So, um. Maybe that'll be done before she graduates from college. Or maybe I'll just do it for me. I really like that basket of fruit. I love a good basket of fruit. Oh, this I ordered um, at Christmas with um, a gift certificate my mother had given me to ABC Stitch, which is different than 123 Stitch. No, 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 I didn't order it at Christmas because it just came out at market. I know I waited a long time for it. It just came. Um, and I love it. I would love to stitch that whole sampler. And I, I want, if you see anybody try to recreate the sampler, I don't know if you can put these two designs, I don't know how they're scaled. If you could put those two together and then somehow make Jesus and you'd have to do that tree and that tree 
If you see anybody try to recreate this sampler, let me know. Tag me in the picture. Um, because I would love I would love to do these pieces individually, but I'd love to do them in um, in a row like that with the cross on there too. I think that would be really a lot of fun to stitch. This is something I ordered for my birthday. I've wanted this one for a really long time. A really, really, really long time. This one had been on my wish list. Shepherd's Sampler by Brenda Gervais. I really like that. Um, I guess when you stitch samplers a lot, you stitch a lot of long up and down vertical rectangles. And so uh, horizontal rectangles really catch my eye. Um, and of course it's red and green with a brick house. This was one I got myself for my birthday. Caroline Broomhead um, by Plum Street Antiques. I love that. Really, really like that. This one I got on eBay. Um, and I've been looking up the handwork sampler collection a lot. But this is, I think there's a couple of, this is Sampler Ornaments 2, Homes and Gardens. And of course, that's what I love. This is like a church on a hill. I really like that. Um, that would be a good Christmas sampler. That one, hmm, I mean, it's nice. But that's what I really love. That one right there. And that one. So that was... Um, the Handwork Sampler Collection, Sampler Ornaments 2, Homes and Gardens. And I think I've seen that on eBay a lot. Um, this one I got with some birthday money. Sarah Hopwood by the Scarlet House. Really love those dogs. I'm never crazy about stitching identical motifs side by side. I mean, I know that's a thing on samplers is to have mirrored images it's not my favorite because i feel like i'm stitching a design twice and i don't usually like to do that but i'll do it for this because i love those dogs looks like farm girl's dog or farm girls or it looks like a sheep maybe the this one i've wanted what is it sarah red fern or red fern i don't know um, Nicole's Needlework, of course, made me, convinced me I needed this one, watching her stitch it. The next ones, um, I had a very cruel trick played on me on my birthday. Um, we went to my grandmother's birthday, my grandmother's house. It was my 45th birthday. What do you do on your 45th birthday? I don't know. I did what I did on my 40th birthday. I went to my grandmother's house. Um, and my mom always calls when she gets somewhere so she can have people come out and help her bring in the tea and the food and just the various other articles that she, that she travels with. So she told the kids to come out and she had a plastic bin, and I put a picture of this on Instagram, full of cross stitch patterns and some kitted up patterns and she said, you know, this is for your mom's birthday. And she gave it to Bella. Isn't that what she said, Bella? Yeah. She said, this is for your mom's birthday. Gave it to Bella, told her to take it in the house. So Bella walks in the house and puts this bin um, down in front of me. And Granny said, this is for your birthday. And I'm <gasps> hyperventilating. And I'm just like, you know, dozens and dozens of patterns and kitted up patterns and linen and variegated threads. And my mother rushes into the house and says, oh, no, 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 no. You get to pick five things. You don't get all of those. You get to pick five. Thank you, Mom. That was very nice of you. I picked this. This had been on my list for a really long time. Um, when I get this finished, I'm going to leave it out all the time. Not just for Christmas. I really, I don't know if that's supposed to be, yeah, Sampler Tree Ornament Series. I would leave that out all year round. I like that a lot. I picked out this one. 
And I might change the house to a red house. Probably. Because I don't have enough red houses. I picked this out. And I saw that Priscilla put it in her Mania Starts. I can't remember if she started it or not. But she was talking about not doing all the alphabet down below there. And I don't know. I mean, it would be pretty either way to just have geranium house and then bring up that border down there. So I don't know. I picked this one out of the bin. So that is one, two, three, four. And that was a good one. And then I picked out, I picked out seven. This one. Long Dog Sampler Scarlet Ribbons. I like this one because I like all the little proverbs in there. Make much of time, practice makes perfect, time flies, love conquers all. I like little pithy sayings on samplers. And I like red and white. I swiped this Merrily Beans. You remember I had gotten on a Merrily Beans kick. Not so much stitching them as just collecting them. Mostly collecting them from my mom. And then the last one I picked out was Blackbird Designs, Bittersweet Moon. I really like that one. And I wonder, to make it look more autumnal, because it's got an acorn in the corner and an oak tree. I wonder if um, a purple house might be a little more autumnal. Maybe a maroon house. Um, but that'll be fun. Then I won a sampler from April, May, June. I mean, I won a chart giveaway from April, May, June. I won the Curse of the Raven. I like that. So thank you very much. I'm very excited to receive that. And then she sent me, just as an extra, this lovely sampler she did she said she didn't think that she would stitch this sarah Steele, 1772 um it says two things i have asked of thee deny them not before i die remove far from me vanity and lies give me neither poverty nor riches feed me with food that is my portion lest i be full deny thee and say who is the unless i be full lest I be full, deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. I'm pretty sure I didn't read that right. But that's a lovely sampler. And I very much appreciate it. And would like to add it in to my sampler stitching. All right, so... Some of these just came from random places. I found this either on eBay for a good price or Stash Unload, another of the hometown holidays. Found this somewhere at a good price, Wiener Wonderland. I have the spring rolls, weenie dogs. I'd like to get the turkey sausage and the, there's a, there's like a Thanksgiving wieners dogs and then there's a Halloween wiener dogs and I'd like to get both charts and combine them because there are some elements from the Thanksgiving wiener dogs that I really like but I don't stitch pilgrims I just don't stitch pilgrims I'm just not into pilgrims I don't really like witches and I don't really like pilgrims I'm somewhere in the middle <laughs> So, um, but I like this one. I'd like to get that started in the fall for um, winter. Um, I don't have, I've never had a dachshund. Um, my sister, um, my sister got a new dog. Like every time I got, you know, with my two pregnancies, about halfway through my pregnancy, she would get a dog. Um, the first one when Mary Margaret, when I was pregnant with Mary Margaret was Sydney and she was a dachshund. And then she got a Chihuahua mix and, um, just a couple of years ago, they got a, Sydney has died. Um, they got a male dachshund named Charlie. 
and it was sort of a sad story. Somebody had gotten the gotten him, and my brother in law's a school teacher, didn't want them, gave it to somebody, gave the dog to somebody else in the school, the puppy, and they didn't want them. And so they're just like, Oh well, you know, these people they like dachshunds. So they gave it to my um, sister and brother in law, this dog that had been passed around at least twice. Um, he's a full blooded dachshund. <laughs> miniature dachshund he's on the porky side and then they got um about two years ago they found this um stray chihuahua or chihuahua mix and it had bladder stones and mange and i don't know, I don't know what and they got it all fixed up and it's the nastiest meanest creature on the face of the earth if you make eye contact with it it'll growl and snap at you and they scanned it to see if it had a chip for an owner and it did but the owner didn't want it anymore but it turned out the dog's name was Bella and so my sister was like you know I know that we have a Bella who's a human but that's the dog's name what are you gonna do so now I have Bella and then we have the other Bella because that's the dog's name um, I got this either on stash unload or um, and I guess this is the one that was originally from the Colonial Gatherings Club I think it's been re-released um, on its own but I love that I just love the colors I don't love the white and the white house gosh you, you know with those you got those white flowers you could take one of these colors up here and do the house that color now that would appeal to me that would appeal to me. Um, Jane Pattison, 1806 by um, Shakespeare's Peddler. I really like that one. I like the colors. And then the last one I have is Handwork Samplers, the 1848 Jane DeWar, or DeVar, I don't know, sampler. And you can see why I like it. No explanation needed on that one. All right, so that is all that I have somehow or the other acquired in three months. A lot of it was my birthday. Um, I had some older finishes um, framed on the wall that I took down that I wanted to show you. Oh, but people are probably gone, but I've already taken them down off the wall, so I might as well show you. A lot of people have been talking about this sampler it was from a magazine I'll have to look it up and see which one primitive stitcher if you go and look maybe two videos ago primitive stitcher talked about this she may have said which magazine it was from I did this in um, I think I finished it in 2002 back when I stitched with two threads um, these fennel or dill plants down here I Got over my fear of French knots because there's a million of them. But I just wanted to show this to you because I know everyone is stitching bees this summer. Um, it seems like Pam from Just Keep Stitching had showed this once. It seems like several people have showed this before. Um, I would, I don't frame with mats anymore. Um, this one doesn't bother me. Samplers, I just don't really like samplers framed with mats, but this is a modern cross stitch piece, so it doesn't, oh, you can see all the junk everywhere. And it is sitting, it is hanging on top of uh, this, it's near the mixer. So stuff kind of gets blown away. This one, I don't know. Um, Who's to, I did not, I'm not going to show you close up because I did not clip my threads before I had this framed. Um, was there a designer called Stone and Thread? Because I kind of think this might have been by a designer called Stone and Thread. I don't know what the name of the pattern would be unless it's Garden Flowers. But I loved this. It's got that little glove, Michael Jackson garden glove up there and the two little birds and the bunny rabbit who's got some crazy variegation and I love that flower I, I imagine that's 
two separate colors of variegated floss, but I really like that flower. So that's all I have to show you. Um, I can tell you I'll be back in a month. I can tell you I'll be back in six weeks. Um, but we know how that goes. Um, there's no other life-shaking events, I don't think, happening um, this summer. Um, Bella has the play Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of next week. Next weekend. Um, at some point, we'll be driving to Arkansas um, to see my in-laws. Jerry has all kinds of trips um, coming up. Um, and some of them I would really love to go on. Um, um, he works, he does work with the, um, Indian Child Welfare Act, and they've said that, um, they might want him to go to Arizona and, um, sit in on some tribal courts, and that might coincide with a tribal gathering that'll be held in Arizona at some point, and that sounds really I would love to go and do that. I mean, tag along, not me go and do anything important, but <laughs> tag along. Um, he's going to California. He's going, um, I hope he's going to the Georgia coast at a time when the girls can go. Um, it, then we can all go um, to the beach. Um, but other than that, I will just be taking kids to the pool, which is what they're sitting in there waiting on me to do. Um, going and visiting my grandparents, hanging out at the rehab center. Uh, my grandmother's not in the rehab center; she's staying with my mom, and then with my grand and with my mother. Um, stitching and crocheting, all the things. Um, I've been doing all three, stitching, crocheting, and knitting, but you know, when one craft calls out to you more strongly than the others, I mean, you just, you have to go where your energy is. And right now, a lot of my energy is for crochet. And you know, you gotta ride the wave. You know, you gotta, if that's where your energy is, if that's where your passion is, that's where you're going to get the most done. Um, but I'm still trying to stay with my rotation, with my cross stitch rotation. Um, I don't know which one of them. I mean, I can't really see myself taking a crochet blanket down to the pool, but um, maybe I'll do some washcloths. So, until I see you again, bye-bye.